I was a freshman and I used to always work out, you know, be super cut up. The biggest <laughs> fashion mistake I ever made, I'm wearing a suit, right, with a vest, but I wear no shirt. I just have the slacks, I'm walking around camp with my backpack. And everybody is just roasting me. And to like, this day, I still regret that. That's like one of my biggest, life's biggest regrets. I had three dreams growing up. What do you, what do you think one of them was? <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's one. So I had three dreams growing up. I think they already touched on it. You got to be super specific with your dream. I actually, at the age of seven, was watching ESPN. Deion Sanders and Jerry Rice are my two favorite players. I pointed to the screen at seven and said, I'm going to play for the San Francisco 49ers. I also said, I'm going to have a highlight on the ESPN Top 10 countdown. And I said, I'm going to buy my mom a house. Those three things. That was it, right? 15 years later, I had the opportunity to be in camp to try to make the team. And so I could say, I want to play in the NFL. That's not specific enough. Like, it's crazy. It blows my mind to say that I said it at the age of seven, the actual team, 20 minutes away. And, and it happened. I've gotten 10. 10 things in the mail saying, we're, I'm not going to receive anything. I just have to do it, whatever, you know, current, my current state of health. 10 letters. And so he calls me, and I'm surprised. I'm like, so what, what are you calling me for? He said, we just settled. I said, what do you mean? We just settled. Well, settled on what? I talk, we talked to the Niners. We talked to the Sabercats. We talked to all these other teams I play for. We just settled. And the amount that they settled for was more than my annual salary for my job. <laughs> 10 hours after saying, in faith, I'm going to leave. Oh, man, oh, man. But what I want you to do is stop waiting. I've had four friends die this past year. I had an uncle die last year. My dad just beat cancer. I have a brother that's dealing with diabetes, another one that's on the, on the brink, right? So I watch what I put in my system. I watch what comes out of my mouth. I watch all these things. But when they eulogize me, there will be no lies told. He did it. He, he lived to the fullest, right? He built up his son, he built up his daughter, he built up his wife, he left a legacy. He left not only material things, but a legacy of faith. I would imagine on their deathbed, there's really only a couple of things that they want. And it's actually the most important things in life. A lot of times they want more what? Time. And what else do they want? God. Oh, that's a great one. They're crying out to God. They, they, they want some Jesus now, right? <laughs> and they want their family. So we have to find ways to create margin in our life right now. Those are the most important things. Living your life like you're on your deathbed. But just think about there's something that's been placed inside of you that may not ever happen unless you do it. So I'm gonna ask you guys, and maybe you've heard this before, like what is pesticide? What does that mean? It's a killer, it's a killer, killer of bugs, right, right. What about suicide? Killer of self, homicide. Kill. 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 You're killing. You're killing something, right? So what does decide? If you're killing, what does decide mean? It means to kill off every other option. When you decide what you really want, you kill off every other option. When I said at the age of seven, I want to make it to the NFL, I killed off every other option. I want to make an impact. Okay, but I would challenge you to be more specific. What is that? I don't know what that means. The impact doing what sure with you? Still working it out. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I can use Romeo as an example. He decided I'm going to have this event. I don't know who's going to show up in faith. I made the decision. I booked the place. I got the room. I have my lovely new wife to help me and other friends to help me. And look. He decided to make it happen, and it's happening. He made the decision. How, how hard do you guys think it is to make it to the NFL? Right. Zero to 100%, what's the chances? One. Uh, 0.1. 0.11. Kids, it's funny, kids, 50%. <laughs> so half the people on your Pop Warner team is going to be in the NFL. Okay. 32 teams, seven rounds. About 2.30, around there, right? So imagine, from a million kids, the kids need to hear this. People need to hear this, because this is life. This is any sport, a lot of jobs, a lot of high-profile jobs. From a million to 70,000 to 230 that get drafted. And only half of those will play more than three years. I have a friend that played for the Bears for seven years, made the Pro Bowl, made tons of money. He was done playing at what age, you think? 28. 28, exactly. Wow. 
You should get some type of award or something. <laughs> 28. <laughs> he was 28 years old. So what else are you going to do with your life? Right? You can't put, oh, I could catch a, pa a fast pass on your resume, right? I could. <laughs> you can't. You can't talk about how, how good you are at tackling somebody on your resume. Um, in, I enter the NFL draft, I break every record in Sac State. To this day, I don't know what any of them are. I've never cared, I just love to play in the game. Mm -hmm. I'm actually the sport I'm the best in is baseball. Won the championship at Alvarado in wrestling. Um, my favorite sport to play to this day is basketball. But somehow, God bless me with this gigantic hands, <laughs> and I ended up making it in football. So, I enter the NFL draft, we have what's called a pro day, which means any NFL team that's interested in you, Brings, sends their scouts out. So it's like five teams, Raiders, Niners, Eagles, I forget who else. And they have you do the, all these drills. The first thing is the bench press. So they put two plates, which equals 225 pounds. And so they're not expecting a receiver to lift that much. If you could do five or six, that's like really good for a receiver. They said, quarterbacks, receivers, you don't really have to do it. I'm like, I've been, coming from a small school like Sac State, you have to do something because they're already doubting you. Like, you guys don't play nobody. What's the Big Sky Conference? And so my last name's Amy, I go up first. So I take it off. I said, I'm not even going to let nobody spot me. I take it off. I start going. How many times do you think I did it? 27 times. Hey, Ten. I love you, man. That's awesome. <laughs> Ten. Ten. Did you get it? Ten. Ten. Three. That's just disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> That's just disrespectful. Three, though? Three? Close, right? Fourteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Uh, Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty. And then I re-rack it. I re-rack it. Now, if you know something about an NFL scout, imagine, I'm going to talk about how cutthroat it is in the NFL, or professional sports. Imagine you're at your job, right? And someone cut brothers. This, mm -hmm. is a, this is a scout. You don't know them. You never talk to them. Their job is to try to find a reason to cut you. Because there's millions of players out there, right? And so, they're looking when I'm doing every drill, just like this. No facial expressions. When I did that 20 and re-racked it, he did. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the NFL is so cutthroat. One time on, a, on a, a community trip, there was a guy that had, we all had to wear suits. We used to have like top three, you got money, right? Whoever looked the nicest. I got second place at this trip. This guy wore white athletic socks with his suit and got cut. Whoa. Oh, what? It's a business. By the time you go to college, it's a business. I've seen a guy get cut for walking into a meeting five seconds late. Yeah. It's a business. So now when I have opportunities to do other things, it's like I've been in such high pressure situations, it's like, okay, whatever. Uh, Mike Nolan's first year as the head coach. Mike McCarthy, who's the Packers head coach, is our offensive coordinator. Uh, Mike Singletary is our linebackers coach. So we have some pretty solid, legit coaches. Said, you're probably not gonna make it, um, <laughs> but we're gonna give you a chance. So we think the only thing that I heard was? Chance. Chance. We're gonna give you a chance. We're gonna give you a chance. You're gonna give me a chance. So I walk into the lockers, and it's like, if you ever seen this plush, mahogany, wood grain, you have all the cleats and gloves and tape and everything that you want, unless you're a rookie. <laughs> you have something from Home Depot, it's just black. <laughs> For real, it's like a big crate. It's just black. Your name is duct tape with Sharpie. And so, I'm sitting across from Frank Gore and I'm like, what the heck is this? All right? But one of, one of the things that I've learned is you have to use everything as motivation.